it's you. All right, welcome back to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. Mike Catalana, I am Jenna Cottrell. We're talking day eight of Bill's training camp. And before we get started, please be sure to like, comment, and most importantly, su subscribe to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. The algorithm really improves for us if you do subscribe, so we always appreciate it. Uh, let's talk news of the day. Uh, Jordan Poyer leaving practice early after suffering an injury. He left on the cart. He was on the passenger seat of the cart. Um, it's a huge deal. Yeah, it is. I mean, he was in pain. There's no question. We saw that on the field. He sat with the trainers, and it seemed like, you know, the pain really hit him. This is a tough guy. Yeah. Played through a lot of stuff, but there is some acute pain that happens. It appears they said it's an elbow, and that's what they're looking at. Uh, he eventually got himself together a little bit, came into the tunnel. Now, you happened to be in the tunnel when he came through, and you saw him still in that kind of pain. Yeah, it was. he seemed kind of disoriented at first, and then he was sitting down. You could just tell that, like you said, he was in a lot of pain, holding his left arm. Um, like I said, I, I think it's a situation that's, you know, this is obviously very early on. I know he's expected to get an MRI as well, uh, but the amount of pain that he was in, was a concern because look, as just as a human being you see someone going through that you're like wow that yeah. it, did, it did not look good from that standpoint but again this is still early and we're not speculating we don't have no idea and <laughs> that's what doctors are for yeah we're just commenting on what we saw any fan here saw him get injured saw him on the side yeah. saw him leave you just happened to be there as he was going out and it's real pain now we have seen players in severe pain and that doesn't mean it's a severe injury correct so we're not saying that we're just talking about the way he was tough man in a tough situation so the bills are getting him looked at but we don't know again what this means what this means for an injury but it's these are key guys um, we saw the same thing an injury happened to Micah Hyde now they're very fortunate that Micah was back out day later right yeah. with he works with the on the side with the trainers in some of the individual drills that's what you want to see, but these are the things you always worry about at training camp. Absolutely. I mean, this is this is still early on. We're only in week two, and it's something that when you have guys like Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer, you know, have to leave practice because of an injury, you take a, a, a pause because you're like, those are huge key contributing members of this team, and it is so early. But like you said, Micah Hyde has been back to practicing with the team. He was out doing individual work for a little bit. Uh, another guy that's been out in terms of to the side, still working out is Trey White. Once again, we see him with the trainers quite a bit. Now, Leslie Frazier was asked today about a timeline for Trey White. And I thought his answer was, uh, was interesting the way he phrased it because he didn't say, he said, look, Trey White is progressing, but like you said, Mike, there's not a specific date yet. Yeah, it's kind of hard to put that date on it. I will tell you this, again, not being doctors, not being trainers, just looking at an athlete do what he's asked to do at the moment with the trainers, he looks great. He's shredded. <laughs> he really there is. There is not an ounce of fat on his body. Yeah, and I don't even know if there was before, but yeah. Trey was not that type of an athlete and again he's got the knee so he's he's working and rehabbing and trying to get himself and maybe it was you know he's able to do less of that type of cardio yeah but he worked on his body there's no question our only thing is watching him work and we don't even see what he does at other times of the day physically he looks close there's still a big step between that and when they want to get him on the field get right. him in uniform having competing with other players all those things that go into him playing the Rams game week one or whatever. Yeah. But from a physical standpoint, as a guy working out, he looks great at the moment. He definitely does. It's just like you said, acclimating him to having other people around him, the practices, and then obviously the full level of contact, the zero to 100 that it takes actually getting on the football yeah, field. And I, I just wanted to add something about this. As we're at camp and we see the guys out there, there's always this thought of how much time do they need to be on the field? I'm not talking about Trey White. He hasn't played at all. Mm -hmm. But you think to yourself, man, these guys get nicked up. And someone would say, what does Jordan Poyer or Micah Hyde really need these practices for? Now, they will tell you they need some of that. Yeah. I would still keep it pretty limited, even in full health, mm -hmm. because these are the kind of players that they are. But they know their position. Yeah. At the moment, who knows? It could be Kair Elam and Dane Jackson as the starting corners. Yeah. So there has to be, of all positions, man, those guys work well together. Yeah. So you need them on the field. And if you're going to play and you're going to compete, there's always a risk of injury. So with a guy like Trey White, you're going to mitigate this by saying, we're waiting, we have a plan, we're going to get him there. When it's a guy who gets hurt during camp, I think you're going to be cautious too 
Yeah. But those guys are going to be on the I mean, Stefan Diggs is out there. Josh Allen's out there. They're all out there. And they want to be out there. Yeah. They need they need the to stay sharp and the competitiveness. Preseason, another story. As a guy who did the preseason games all those years, I enjoyed it. But I can absolutely see why you just, as teams, get to the point and say, preseason doesn't, as far as reps on the field, doesn't really matter that much to those guys. But they're going to be out here for training camp. All right, for people that don't know, Mike was the sideline reporter for the Bills preseason games for a long time. Yeah, 19 years doing that. We're going to say two decades. Two decades. (laughs) From the first time they came here, that's when we first got it, when they came here to St. John Fisher. And it was a ball. Uh, I have pictures of myself with all the coaches. And we went through a lot of them at the time. So I made it to McDermott at that point. And then, th- you know, things changed as it, as it went along uh, differently. And the preseason games are a little different. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. You get put on the inside of certain things. That, yeah. was, that was a lot of fun. I still have good relationships from that time. But uh, preseason's different now. It's three games. The starters barely take the yeah. field. So well, that's down the line. Right now we're talking more about practice and getting guys back. Gosh, you're old. No kidding. It does <laughs> feel like it. Sometimes, especially when you keep repeating it, <laughs> or Dan. Dan, not as much. Dan's got yeah. some other things he gives me a hard time yeah. for, but um, I consider it uh, experienced. How's that sound? Grizzled vet. That's it. All right, uh, let's talk more in terms of the defense. Yeah. Saran Neal is a guy that I feel like we've kind of seen uh, bits and pieces of him on the field, and I think he's one of those guys that we asked Leslie Frazier about. Could he expect to see a bigger role this upcoming season? It's interesting to me. I remember when Micah and Jordan, uh, Poyer and Hyde, were talking about him as being, oh, he's the best athlete on the team. Which is... And these guys are great athletes. Those other guys are great athletes. And they were like, no, he's the best athlete. Like, he's that guy. And so you take that athleticism and you say, can his role increase? Now, I, I asked Leslie about that today, and he was like, we've had him in that spot. You would think of it as more of a bigger nickel when Taron Johnson yeah. was hurt. And he got in there, and he played well. And they like him in that spot. Can he play there in the slot? I've seen him a lot on the outside with some injuries, you know, with Trey not out there. Physically, he can run. He's a little bigger, and he can play. I think it comes down to technique and instincts, which are huge things for a corner. Yeah. Which maybe is the difference between being uh, – a great special teamer. Right. That is instincts, but it's more of a, almost like a one-shot thing. You're, yeah. You know your way of getting to the returner or how to box them in. Boy, you're playing corner in this league. There's very, very little margin for error. And you're this close. Yeah. It's crazy. And, the, and you, know, you know the way it is in the NFL. Those guys are open. It's open is open. And what did, uh, it was, uh, Kair Elam was like, it, it doesn't take much. Yeah. These guys get open. So here's a guy who's played corner at a starting level trying to transition to the NFL, and he just realizes that much off is the guy is open and you're going to give up a play. So I think they have hopes for Saran Neal uh, and to an increased role. And I think what he's playing in these situations in camp I think will help him because yeah. as we see with the safeties, you never know when a guy's needed. Absolutely. Uh, another, another guy that – continues to kind of pop and impress is Isaiah McKenzie. And I know Dan Fates is not here today. He has a veteran day off, but uh, he's a guy that just, I feel like he, him and Josh, you know, I've obviously Isaiah has been on the team for a couple years now, but I feel like this, this season, we just expect that role to grow so much more. And he's just had some really acrobatic, nice catches. Yeah. I think it's changed. Uh, He's still that guy. What did Sean McDermott say? Uh, Confidence is not a problem. (laughs) Jokes are not a problem. All that stuff. Yeah. But he is a football player, Mm -hmm. and he's tough, and he makes plays. And what I asked him was, you know, you've gone from, like, a guy Josh would use to a guy he's going to need to count on. And I don't know if you know what I mean. It's just I noticed he had a little smile on his face when he started to answer that because he is going to be one of those guys. And I think he knows it. This is no disrespect to Jamison Crowder, who I think is going to have his opportunity too, and we'll see how it plays out. But I think McKenzie knows I'm one of those guys, and he knows Josh Allen is yeah. going to be looking for him and mm-hmm. counting on him, yeah. not just to come in and run a little shovel pass or a reverse. I mean, what did, and what did he say? I got to get open. Yep. That's his job. Yep. Get open and catch the ball. I also asked just with the expanded role or expecting to be that, like what is the biggest transition for him? Mm-hmm. 
And he kind of paused and took a second and he's just like, I've been running for the last couple of years, just yeah. like essentially hoping. He's like, now I have my opportunity and I want to take advantage of that opportunity. Yeah. And so far what we've seen in camp has been him taking advantage of that. But even Sean McDermott talked about it. Now teams are going to be game planning for you. Now things are going to just look a little bit different. But I mean, the confidence that he has in himself, and I think what we saw last year after having some tough games, then bouncing back, I just feel like he's someone that's really going to be a guy that kind of is looked to a lot this season. Yeah, I, I know how much you enjoy when a player pauses. It terrifies me. <laughs> it terrifies me. Because I feel like they pause a lot when I ask my questions. Well, you ask very insightful questions. Thank you. I you think. do. And okay. then he paused and gave a great answer. I think McKenzie is ready because of that incredibly dedicated diet that he sticks to. <laughs> Chick-fil-A, I believe Snickers bars. Um, and what's the other candy? Skittles, right? Wasn't Skittles one of his or no? No, it was, it was, you're right. It was more of a candy bar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's and loves Chick-fil-A. Yeah. There's a couple in Rochester. Yeah. Yes, there are. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> No, yes. I just meant he's covered here in Rochester oh, he as well. Yeah, yeah, but he does. Did you know? <laughs> well, I'm thinking he, you know, it's, can't get that pregame unless he's got it. You know, it's Sunday. Maybe that's, that's why he's happy when there's a Thursday game or yeah, a Monday, Monday game. night. He can get his Chick-fil-A. But I do think he's a dedicated athlete, and I think he's yeah. prepared. And he's in great shape, and he can run. And so how he gets himself ready is Isaiah. But I think he has transformed as a player. And his rapport with Josh I mean, it speaks for itself. Yeah, it is. But, again, now Josh Allen is looking at him like, I've got Diggs, I've got Gabe, you know, I've got Dawson, mm -hmm. I've got Isaiah. He's a top three receiver and a top four pass catcher on, catcher on this team. He, To me, he's a starter yeah. unless something changes because, to me, I think he's earned that. Yeah. No, I would agree. I think it's going to be exciting to see what he can add because he talked about before he was kind of labeled as a gadget guy. Oh yeah, what did he say? I've been a what? I've been a gadget guy. I've been a third down guy. I've been a this guy, that guy. He went through the whole thing. And then what did he say? Pay me more money for each one of those yeah, things. Yeah. I think is all what the titles. Said. All the titles he would take, and he already is. And you asked him about this. Face of the franchise. He's already the face of the franchise. What's next? And he kind of paused. <laughs> And eventually he got to face of the league. Yeah, but he's like, we'll wait on that one. Yeah, well, it's, it's been like Tom Brady, maybe Josh Allen, yeah. and then maybe Isaiah McKenzie. Val Cottrell does not know who Isaiah McKenzie is yet. And his mom. <laughs> yeah, it's my mom. Big Buffalo Plus fan. <laughs> She's probably commenting right now on my outfit. Um, sorry, Mom. Uh, actually, they're coming to camp, which will be fun. Um, all right, well asides aside uh please be sure to like comment and subscribe to our content if you enjoy the bills insight and intricacies of our lives as well do you believe if somebody didn't enjoy it they wouldn't be still with us now that's true <laughs> oh, we're glad but, they enjoy it yeah we have a lot of fun clearly uh so thank you so much for watching for mike and dan who's back in the studio i'm jenna cottrell uh we'll catch you next time here on buffalo plus